Welcome to the String Theory of the Unexplained. I'm your host, John Ventry. Your co-host is Fred Saluga. And our returning guest is Aurora. And today's episode, we're speaking about ancient deities and the origin of hell. Welcome to the show. Well, guys, thanks for coming back. Let's do this thing here. Um, you know, I read a couple of books, which is how I base all the shows on. As I got, and I got a whole pile of books right over there that you could see about 15 of them to read. But, uh, you know, I read some books about what you see happening right now in the country is the return of the fallen angels, the uh, ancient deities, and in particular, uh, Baal, Shiva, and Moloch. Moloch was abortions, child sacrifice. Shiva was uh, really transgender, uh, you know, gays, lesbians, transvestites, and a lot of that stuff was prevalent back in the old, you know, prior to Christ, let's say, in those civilizations, and Baal was just bad. I used to, I used to think Baal was actually Satan, but apparently he's just like the number two guy, <laughs> but uh, that they're back. So, uh, I was at a conference, Fred, with Stephen Greer, years ago, and he brought up eschatology, and I really didn't know what eschatology was, but it's the study of the end times, and then the question comes up whether humans can do something that could force the return of Christ and start at the end of days. Just think about that. Do you think that we could do something that we bring the end of days to happen? You know, you had, I don't think you can because you had the Nazis and, and they killed six million people and that didn't start the end of days. But, you know, something with the well, genetics, let's say, Fred, where you can, I, I was watching a James Bond movie, the last one, and he, he said to this one woman, we can create a genetic virus and wipe in a particular race off the planet, right, kill them all. Right, yeah. You know, do you think something oh. like that would cause the end? Of times. I, I think the corona could. Well, similar to that. I mean, you, you look at it, I mean, you know, it, it was out to get all dead, all older people. Yeah, and uh, other people. I right. mean, so you develop something like that again, and it could. It could do wipe out the whole planet, actually. But I don't think Jesus comes back based on what we do. I think he's got his own plan, you know. I don't think we could do something that would force him to say, okay, that's it. Well, it could be. I mean, when they wiped him no. out with the flood, no. right, it was because we were so freaking corrupt and evil. So, I don't know, just an interesting thought. Mm. You know, uh, can, can we cause but, that, you know? Well, is J.C. here right now? He's always here. I mean, yeah. you know, so is he checking out everything we're doing? Oh, he is, yeah, and he's so. got to be disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, he might just uh, get pissed off and say, yeah. okay, this is it. How do you like my props? I got the Bible here. Yeah. I've got this one here, the Holy Bible, the Word of God. Because that's what we're really talking about yeah. that. And I bought this down in Florida at the... the they used to have a Bible theme park in Orlando. Mm -hmm. It was, I discovered, I, all the times I went down there, and I finally discovered it, I went two years in a row, and then with, with uh, COVID, it closed down. Mm. It, it shut down. But I got to mention this, too, since we're talking about ancient alien theory. And, you know, to me, what you see the ancient alien show, it's a lot of uh, blasphemy. It's anti-God, I think, anti-creation. It's very deceptive, you know, that the aliens created or upgraded us. And it's really Sitchin, Van Daniken, and Giorgio, you know, the three you see here on the screen. Mm. But, you know, I read something, and this one professor, he was talking about ancient Sumeria, and he says, well, they had a story prior to Moses of uh, Adamu being here first, and I think Sitchin talks about that. But yes, then, and so he's true. trying to say that the, the Hebrew version is not correct, but then I'm saying to myself, well, wait a second. The 130 different cultures all have a story of the Great Flood, right? Yes. right? Yes. So, yeah. so if you think about it, if you believe the Noah story, and from his kids, everything, and then they were separated at the Tower of Babel, of course they're all going to have the same story. So, you know, because, the, let's say, the Hebrews said it, and somebody said it prior, but they all came from Noah, right? They all came from the same story start the same person so I don't think him saying that Sumeria has an older text than the Old Testament means anything you know it's still basically the same story Adam or Adamu it's the same story you know but uh, but I, 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 I would just say to the viewers 
the ancient alien stuff is going to get you down the wrong path if you're interested in uh, uh, UFOs or but, but angels and fallen angels. But John, ancient aliens is, is broadcast for people. They entertainment. Say, they say what they think people want to hear. hear. Entertainment. You know, yeah. So, yeah. Well, here's Giorgio. Take a look at the screen, Fred. Uh, this is him when he started out. Uh -huh. This is him through the years on the History Channel. If you notice, his hair grew with every lie he told. Just like Pinocchio. Yeah. His hair grew with every lie. <laughs> I think that's the perfect... Well, I think the more he got on his hair, the worse his brain gets. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. well, that's, that's Giorgio. So, yeah. so, you know, here's something interesting, too, Fred. You'll remember this, this book here, Alternative History of Mankind. Right, right. Uh, I got that home. Yeah, I, I published that in 2013. And, you know, I really, in it, was talking about... It was, you know, I picked up an ale, a hybrid... Mm -hmm. Out in Roswell, that was a storyline to tell the story, but it was about ancient deities, how they, they built the ancient structures and, and the old civilizations in Egypt and all of that. It was really about ancient deities, how, you know, like Ra, Horus, all of those, those are fallen angels, all those Egyptian gods, all of that. And then when Jesus showed up, was crucified, that was the end of their open reign. When he said it's over, they could, because I believe they walked around and people could actually see them. And then after he, he, Jesus died, uh, they could no longer openly show themselves. Then they returned in 2008 with, uh, really with fundamental change in my opinion. They are changing this country and that started in 2008. And I read this book called Return of the Gods, mm -hmm. right? I tell you, if you want to read a book, it talks about those three fallen angels Amen. that I just mentioned, right? And uh, this book here by Jonathan Kahn, and he really goes into how each of the particular gods uh, control a particular area of our culture. But Return of the Gods was very, very good. So, um, and then, you know, I don't know, you're familiar with Arthur C. Clarke? Uh, yes. You probably know 2001. Yeah. But Childhood's End, I would recommend that to anybody to uh, read the book or watch the miniseries that was on sci-fi. I bought the, it's three part I think, three or four part miniseries. But, you know, it talks about this UFO showing up, doesn't, they don't show themselves, but it, you know, it's, it, it talked, everybody had to take the mark. Mm -hmm. They cured all diseases, they, you know, the environment, uh, global warming, they cured everything. And then when everyone finally took that mark, you know, uh, like they're telling you today, so right. we can keep track of your medical records. Well, right. I don't need to have that in my wrist to do that. Right. You know, when they showed themselves, they were demons. So the aliens were actually demons. That was their way to trick us, get us to take the mark, and then they incinerated the planet. It, I tell you, it was, but I think they got it right. Because I think if the spaceships show up like Independence Day friendly, right. We're going to follow them because they're superior, and that's the way we are. We're not leaders. 70-80% of people are followers, they're not leaders, and I think that's, uh, that's what's going to happen. So, But that's another one, too, that's good. So let's get into our show. I, I have returned. Okay, Freddie. And I left the phone out there so I don't hear it. Okay, now everybody knows it because you're on film. So, uh, this, I read this book about heaven and hell, the origin, the history of the yeah. afterlife, heaven and hell. but. We'll get into it, but the, I think he cherry picks certain things and uses a lot of semantics, and we'll get into it. But like all scientists and medical professionals, when you get when you read their stuff, and some of it's really interesting, they're really more atheist, and very few, if any, will acknowledge God. And, and the biblical story that, that we know mm -hmm. and believe in the Bible. They just, they all, the, those medical and scientific professionals all show their true colors, that it, they can scientifically explain stuff, and it has not, very little to do with uh, miracles or the supernatural, let's say. So this, this is what he said, it's interesting. Here's the history of the afterlife, and I know you might have some, some uh, uh, stuff to add there too. He says heaven and hell are not mentioned in the Old Testament. So I pulled my Bible out and I'm going through it and I'm looking up verses and all of that. Okay, it doesn't say hell, uh, but it says Gehana. Yeah, Gehana. And it says Hades because that's the Greek <coughs> um, interpretation. And then it doesn't say heaven. Nowhere in the Bible do you find the words heaven and hell. 
right? right? It says the kingdom. So this guy's trying to say that, well, heaven and hell were created later. Well, they were as far as a word, but the description is still there, right? So if you look at the word Hades, that's Greek. It's mentioned, it goes all the way back to Homer's Odyssey. That's where you first get the word uh, Hades. And uh, here's the interesting, this is what we really want to talk about in a little bit. Homer said that everyone becomes shadow people. He called them shades. Yes. Yeah. But you know the talk about shadow people? Who was right. that woman, the, the blonde woman who passed away? Good friend, uh, Rosemary Ellen Guiley, yes. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, she talked about about shooty shadow people. Right. And, and right. my daughter had a situation yeah. with shadow yeah. people. Yeah. We'll yeah. get into that. Yeah. But, uh, but that's where it goes back to. They called them shades, shadow people. But the Greeks believe that you're not fully dead until you get a proper burial. That's why, if you remember, with like yeah. Troy, yes. when Achilles killed, uh, oh, who was the son of the, the other guy? Oh, uh, remember, the father went to get the body back because he dragged, yes, he dragged yes. him on the chariot yeah. and had to give him proper burial. That's what they believe. Hector. Hector. When yes, Hector, Hector died, right? So, uh, so now, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, if you're righteous, you will get resurrected at the end times. He said very little about what happens to you right now, when you die right now, what happens. Jesus talked about end times is what he was more concerned with. A new earth uh, is what's going to happen and you'll get a new body. But, um, and this is what the author says, if you could read really what he said in the Bible, wicked people are annihilated. If you're really wicked, evil, you don't. There's no repenting, and and you're just at that point. Boom, you're you're done. So if you're a bad person now, when you die, you know the good ones going to heaven, right? Uh, some of those are going to be buried, or they're walking around in this darkness. But the really bad people, that's the end of you, right? And, and that's what Jesus basically said in the Bible. But and here's interesting too. Well, he also said, Jesus said that anyone who aids the Antichrist will burn in the lake of fire. And we'll get into the, the lake of fire, because mm -hmm. people got the wrong impression of hell in the lake of fire. But we're going to get into that. So Socrates, he had said that you go into like this eternal dreamless sleep. So when you die, you, you kind of, you know, like some say you're in this darkness, others say you're in, you're in this eternal sleep. Uh, and you have an immortal soul, and you also go to Tartarus for purification. So that was the first time that, they, that we had this middle area where they were going to cleanse your soul before you can go anywhere. Virgil basically said you go, you're either punished or rewarded. You go to Hades or you go to the kingdom, uh, and you can reincarnate. You can keep coming back until you get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, Plato... He said the, uh, um, the soul is immortal, it lives forever, but you will meet justice based on how you lived. And he said the soul has substance to it. And we, we actually proved, maybe 20 years ago, we had 21 grams. When you die, you immediately lose 21 grams as the soul leaves your body. So what you got to remember, the, oh, then uh, Lucretius and Cicero believed that the soul perishes with the body. So when you die... Your soul dies with you. you. Nothing happens. You don't go anywhere, you know. But you, what you got to remember, though, they made it very hard to research this. Is you got, you know, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and they the stories. Some of the things that are said are different because, you know, God was more of an avenging God in the Old Testament because of our sin, right? And in the New Testament because of Jesus, He was a lot more forgiving. But when you look stuff up, I, and they don't, a lot of times you're reading it, and I'm saying, are you referring to the God of the Old Testament or the God of the New Testament, you know? And it made it very hard to research this. Greeks believed in the immortality of the soul. Uh, the Jews or the Hebrews said the body cannot be resurrected. So that's why they were against Jesus, because they said you, because he actually had a body, body resurrection. And they said that's not possible, right? Uh, they say you return to the dust. The life force dies when your breath ends. Um, in Psalms, they refer to Sheol, or nothingness of the grave. Um, but the, the, the Hebrews were concerned not with individuals, but with the fate of the nation of Israel. And just like Jesus talked about um, the end times, wasn't talking about when you died now, he was talking about resurrection and stuff whatever that might be, a thousand years, two thousand years in the future, 
whenever, whenever that might be. So 200 years after Jesus died, uh, then the church agreed with the resurrection of the dead, because that was not what they believed initially, mm -hmm. was that you can resurrect and get a new body. And the words heaven and hell came out and were used in 200 AD. In 200 BC is when the devil emerged in their writings. Because let's say Homer and Socrates, they've been talking about the devil. You know. So a devil came into the writings in 200 BC. So uh, 200 years before Jesus. Uh, Satan uh, was mentioned as a counselor to God. And he opposed humans, and that's how he became the devil. And that's in 200 BC. And who wrote that? Uh, I'd have to go back to the book and actually look up who he says actually wrote it. But uh, in the book that, that I read, that I oh, showed, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about what this You're author said. You're saying Socrates and then, and then live back then? No, no. They, they, they go back to 800 uh, BC. BC. Yeah. 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 Properties and Pluto and them? Plato. Yeah. Plato? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's when the Iliad and the Odyssey were written. Mm -hmm. Rose yeah. was, yeah. was a, thousand, yeah. a thousand BC, that type of stuff. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm referencing them, because they were prior to uh, the New Testament. Right? So uh, King Solomon said that memories are lost, so live as long as you can right now, because when you die, you lose all your memories. Uh, Moses said never to contact the dead, and he, they actually put sorcerers to death. Uh, Ezekiel spoke of uh, the resurrection of the bones of the dead that could be resurrected, and Elijah and Enoch uh, went to heaven without dying. So they're the only two humans that never actually died. They went straight to, to heaven. And in uh, 167 BC, it was said that martyrs go directly to the kingdom of God. So if you get martyred, that's why the Christians in the Colosseum, they were not afraid. Because if you get martyred, you don't go to purgatory, you know, Sheol, any of these places. You go straight to heaven if you're martyred for your faith and your beliefs. So you can see how the history of this, and, and it changed uh, over time. I got a question. Yeah, okay. okay, so martyr. Now let's go to um, today. Did the Muslims. So is this the same thing with them? They go to wherever they're going if they're martyred? Well, I would think that they do yeah. believe. Yeah, so that's yeah, the same, yeah, same yeah, thing as out yeah, back then. Yeah, because they believed in the Old Testament. Right. So, you know, Christians, Jews, and Muslims believe in the Old Testament, but Christians also believe in the New Testament. And, you know, the whole thing with the terrorists and the suicide bombings was yeah. you'll go to straight to heaven. Yeah. They believe in heaven. Yeah. You go, and when you get 72 virgins, so you want to be a, a suicide bomber, you know, because it's better. You know, this doesn't last long, <laughs> and it's over, yeah. and that's eternity. Yeah. So you want to be, you want to do something that you end up in eternity. Enoch, in his first book in 250 BC, he talked of the watches. He's really cool, you know. Yeah. He's the one who talked about the watches, right. the Nephilim, right, where they made it with uh, fallen angels who materialized. Uh, the Great Flood, he talked about a future judgment, rewards and punishments, and the dead resurrecting. That's in 250 BC. So Moses didn't believe in any of those things, but that started to come out years later. Jesus did say the world is controlled by the devil and demons, and God will intervene. He didn't say people go uh, to heaven or hell upon death. He spoke of a darkness that people went to and wandered around in. Evil people will be destroyed on Judgment Day. Good people will be resurrected and saved uh, to a new kingdom on earth. So he didn't say heaven. He called it the kingdom. The kingdom. Um, really evil people will be annihilated. They don't, he didn't say anything about them being punished in hell. Just that, boom, you're gone. You're, you're done with. You're annihilated. But if you believe, even if you've been really bad and you have a change of heart, but it has to be real, you can go to the kingdom, even with all the bad things that, that you had done, because you've changed what you believe and who you are. Now, this is important. The lake of fire, Fred. Mm -hmm. now, now, what do you think like the lake of fire and hell? People first of all think hell is burning lake of fire, right? Most people think? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
So the, the, the lake of fire is for Satan. This is we're talking about at the end times. Satan, the Antichrist, and that's a human who's the Antichrist right. and the false prophet. Demons and any humans that work with them and take the mark. That's who goes to the lake of fire. So Fred, you could be you could be a uh, you know you could have killed twenty people over twenty years, let's say. Well, yeah. But if you don't take the mark, you don't go to the lake of fire. Right. You don't go to heaven, but you don't go to the lake of fire. But if you work with this when it happens, you mm -hmm. go to, those are the humans that go to the lake of fire, only the ones that cooperate. So anything you want to add? Um well, okay, so for me, in, in my experiences and what have you, and what I have studied, um, there are many levels that exist in the other world. Mm -hmm. um, you have levels of heaven, you have levels of, if you want to say, um, purgatory. Purgatory, like yeah. the, within heaven, there are also lower levels of darkness, despair, anguish, mm -hmm. and demonic beings. Right. Um, these levels of darkness are considered to be hell and are far removed from the presence of the light and God. Um, and the origins of hell date back beyond, as, we, as you just discussed, beyond Christianity. Um, the concept of hell was present in many religions, which can be found in Mesopotamia, um, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, and ancient Persia. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the centuries, um, the mixture of cultures and religions influenced the Christian concepts of both heaven and hell. And it wasn't, um, uh, let's see, and although hell is mentioned in the New Testament of the Bible, it wasn't until the early 14th century that the Italian poet Dante in his Divine Comedy created the hell in which we actually know of today. Right, yeah. Yeah, he created it. Um, in his Divine Comedy, uh, Dante had described how the souls were specifically punished with tortures matching their earthly sins. Yeah. And if you talk to a priest or somebody now, or anything you see now that's religion, um, they don't ever say, well, you're going to wander in the darkness. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said you're going to do. Yeah. They talk about, yeah. you know, you're going to get punished, you yeah. know, all the right. evangelists. You're going, to, right. you're going to burn in hell. You're going to, da, da, da. That ain't what he said. You know, that's something, like you said, came about just 600 years ago. Right, <laughs> you know, right. 700 years ago. And e even the idea of Satan, although in the Bible his image was not as we know of him. Right. Like, uh, per, the Persian religion has specifically influenced both the Jews who followed Christ as well as the early Christians. Mm -hmm. And the Persian religion was dualist, dualistic, um, where there was ultimate good and evil. And Satan was therefore seen as the source of all evil in complete opposition with God. Mm -hmm. um, however, the imagery of Satan was later constructed by the Catholic Church as having horns and hooves. And a lot of that was to destroy the paganism. Yeah. Um, such as, so that's why they gave, made him look like he did. Yes, because because of, that's a pagan god, and they wanted to end right. Okay. Like that's examples good. like Moloch and Pan, they wanted to destroy that type of and say that's Belief. yeah, and um, and the bat-like wings where he's derived create he was um, derived creatively by Dante in his Inferno as a way to contrast Satan with the feathered wings of the angels. So it's the opposite yes. of the dove, yes. it's a bat. Yeah, it's a bat. So you know, it's we darkness did, again. We did an episode on vampirism, yeah. remember with that book, yeah. The God's Ghostbusters, and it gave the best description of how like a vampire is the opposite, the bat, yes. the dove. Yes. They're at night, Jesus in the daytime, light versus darkness. Right. You know, every, yeah. drinking blood versus this is my blood, you know, for how you, you know, you go to confession right, right. and you take the sacraments. It was, it was, it was really good. All right, let me, let me continue here. So only, and this is interesting, you got the four Gospels, all of the 11 apostles, because Judas didn't get the right one. <laughs> the 11 apostles wrote a Gospel. And they're all very different. So the Bible is really the four that are most similar, but those four are not similar. There's a lot of differences between the four. So here's some of them. Matthew was the only one who said the evil people uh, go to the eternal fire. Nine times he said that, that you basically get thrown in the fire if you're evil. Uh, here's something interesting though. Marriage vows end with the resurrection. 
right? So you're not married forever, Frank. So people who want to get out of their relationship when you die, you're out of it at that point. We well, become like angels, which you don't, you're not male or female. Well, I basically. didn't want to pass. So you get there. Yeah, yeah, we beat we beat it to the punch. Right, we right. already yeah. that was the end. Although mine was not by choice, you know. So Paul said you can have salvation based on your beliefs, and it's not good deeds. You can do all the charity work and donate money, but it's all based on your belief, it is how it's done. And Paul is the, is the bulk of the New Testament, is his letters, is the, is the bulk of the New Testament. Uh, Jesus was bodily raised, he was not soul raised, and that's the thing the Jews afterwards didn't agree with, because they said you cannot raise a body. And then years later, that became accepted that we will be raised on a new earth and in new bodies, and we're all going to look 20 years old. <laughs> you know, uh, now Paul and Jesus uh, taught that uh, evil people were eliminated. He didn't say you're tortured. They didn't say that uh, you know, okay, Fred, you know that you did this in 1968, 1973, and 1991. You stole in 1997. You lied, and you don't get tortured for that. No, you're gone. <laughs> you know that that's basically what Jesus said, and Paul said the same thing. And then later they changed to that concept of hell that you talked about, but that was really emerged in 200. Uh, years after Jesus, 200 A.D., mm -hmm. is that hell. But there was Hades. There was Hades. Which yes, is hell, yeah, but yeah. they just, it's different words. Right. And that's the Where's Moses at in all of this? Well, he was, uh, uh, I had mentioned uh, Moses, but he, when was Moses? Like, uh, how far back does that go? About 900 B.C., would you say, is Moses? How long back was Moses? Well, with the pharaohs, maybe not that far. Maybe it was 600, 500 B.C. He was a few hundred years yeah, before yeah, Jesus, yeah. let's say. I don't know. The, I don't remember the exact date on that. I'm going to get to Moses. I think I got something on him. Uh, now, Mark and Matthew were very uh, the apocalypse, right? But Luke only spoke very little about the apocalypse. So that's three of the books right there, right? And uh, John and Thomas... Um, their teachings evolved, and, and, and nobody really knows what is the truth. Uh, no, excuse me, they were non-apocalyptic. John and Thomas didn't talk about the uh, apocalypse at the end. And now, Thomas was really different, though. I read his stuff, and it really makes you... I'll, I'll get to that, though. John makes it clear that Jesus is God, and the other three say very little about Jesus' origin that he came, that he was the Son of God, or, or came from heaven, let's say. That's interesting. Those are the main Gospels, and only John is very definite about that. Uh, John wrote the last Gospel, right? He wrote Revelation. He talks a lot about the kingdom and rewards and punishment, and then Revelation. You know what's interesting? I was thinking about this. When Jesus raised Lazarus, he knew about it. People said, well, why aren't you going to Lazarus? He had to wait three days, and I think he may have even said that, I can't go right, I have to wait, I can't go right now. So now I'm reading this and I'm saying, are the three days that he waited, is that because the soul had to go to this middle ground for three days? Even when Jesus died, he was gone three days, right, before he came back. Mm -hmm. Is there something that happens upon death that you go to this judgment, this middle ground, they used to call it Sheol, uh, Tartarus, your purgatory, that you had to be there before? Because it seemed like he waited three days for Lazarus before he raised him, and it was three days before he was raised. Well, there's a process in, in, in my studies and what I, what I do in my life, uh, being a psychic medium and sensitive, um, there is a process when you pass. Like, some people are very quick um, on the other side, and other people it takes a while. But there's a process that you get your life review you get what they call a soul cleansing, mm -hmm. so that they cleanse you like in showers and what have you, um, to remove like the remnants of the physical realm and, you know, yeah. certain things, You're, if you were ill. And that's have purgatory you, according right, to Dante. Right, right. But it's, there's purgatory, I, ha I have seen some, some spirits in purgatory and work with them to get into the light. Mm -hmm. And it is a, it is a process. Um, but there's a cleansing period, and there is a place in, in the kingdom, if, if you want to call it heaven or the summer land or whatever you want to call it in your belief, um, 
where there's a healing center, and a lot of people go there, you know, just to, I, just to. Do they to, have angels there and they, light beings they have, and they have good light, people yes, assisting? Yes. Yes. They have light beings. They have spirit guides. They have angels. Um, they have other people. Sometimes we have family members will help or a close friend. But there's like healing waters. There's healing gardens. And sometimes people just take time to just heal before, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm okay. If they want to come back to see a loved one or something to say, hey, I'm okay. Yeah, this you business to be great. taken care of. Right. But you can't go to heaven if you have any, because heaven's pure. You can't have any impurities. All of that's got to get cleaned, drained, right, right. tortured out of you, but, right. you know, however. It's usually just a healing process, and they're very, they're very loving. They're very caring and they're very giving on the other side. Mm. Um, I've dealt with uh, several spirits and, and you know family members that have come to me or uh, dealing with someone that has literally committed suicide mm. and getting them to understand that you did the act, it's understood, but there's all loving on the other side. There's forgiveness. And Aaron, Can suicides go to heaven or are they yes. bound to earth forever? No, they, they're not allowed to go to heaven. No, they're allowed to go to heaven. See, I think a lot of people say suicides are weak. I gave this some thought years ago, not that I want to commit suicide, but I said to commit suicide, do you know how much strength that takes? Oh, to yeah, actually I agree with you. kill yourself? Yeah. Do you know? I couldn't do it. I, I, know, I, I can't even. Do. Like my son's got diabetes yeah. and he's got to take injections, right? I can't even give, I wouldn't even want to give myself a needle. Can yeah. you imagine offing yourself? Yeah, you that, to me, that takes strength. That, that's not weakness. When, when I was a cop, they would say he took the, the easy way out. Of it. Yeah. I don't think so. I think it takes more strength to kill yourself than not to. Absolutely. That's the way I view it. That, that takes a lot of strength. I had a, and I will say this, I did have a family member um, that did commit suicide. And he was under a lot of mental. Well, that's what it is. There's strength. something going like, on that yeah. pushes them, but, which are the demonic entities. But I saw him as he as he died. I saw I saw my grandfather. I saw my mother. I saw his dog was the first one to greet him. So well, I'm gonna have six of them greeting so, me. Yeah. So he he was <laughs> greeted in the other you know in the other realm, yeah. and he did take time to cleanse. He you know took time to work through it and. Uh, he now helps others on the other side go through the same thing, helping them yeah. when they when they've committed suicide. I think the next episode we do, we're talking about that yeah. actually. But okay, so now Thomas, Thomas is interesting. I always like Thomas. I read his his book, his gospel. He involved. He talked a lot about secret knowledge, mm -hmm. and he had fifty-seven sayings that he said Jesus said that you don't find in the other three gospels. You know, but he basically said that. Uh, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom, is here. It's within you. It's in animals. It's in trees. It's everything here is part of the kingdom. Part of the kingdom, yes. which is different than the way the, the others actually saw it. You know. Um, so even though he says this is the kingdom, for a lot of people, I think, and I even wonder about this: is this really hell? Is this is as bad as it gets? Because I don't think God's going to really make it that bad for you. But for a lot of people's lives, Fred, yeah. this is a hell. Oh, yeah. I mean, so much goes wrong for them. This could actually be as bad as God would make it for you. But you say, like, everything living, like you got trees are living. Yeah, everything. You know, you, yeah. got, you got animals, you got trees, you got leaves, you got, you know, and, and a lot of people don't understand that. It's yeah. Like, you chop a tree down, if you can actually figure it out, they're actually screaming while you're doing it. Yeah. Well, when I read his gospel, it really changed the way I thought about things. It really did, in, in that fact that it's heaven is in you. There's, the, the spirit is in animals, yeah. birds, yeah. plants, all, all of that. Uh, but his, well, his gospel, Thomas, is not one of the four. Mm -hmm. And it's considered, a, what's it called, apocalyptic, whatever the word is, because they don't know that he actually wrote it. That's a problem with a lot of them, right, like the right. Mary, all the others. They couldn't go back and find documents that said that that person actually wrote that. Somebody else who heard them speak may have wrote it, and they said, well, it's not really the person. So, so then, you know, we get to John with Revelations. You got the seven seals, war, famine, uh, death from the sky, which will be an asteroid strike is really what happens. There's never going to be a flood again that kills everybody. It will be by fire, which is... Uh, the star Wormwood, which is an asteroid that strikes, and that's in my book. 
one of the books I wrote. Is Isn't I, uh, fire supposed to be the next one that comes? Well, when an asteroid hits, yeah. you, you get a 700 degree heat wave. So <laughs> it will be fire from an ast from that asteroid yeah. strike will cause the fire. It is what happens. Um, a lot of natural disasters, and then you know it gets confusing. I've read this a couple of times. The seven seals, right? Then you got seven bold judgments. But that's it gets so confusing. It's not just the seven seals are broken and all of these things. Then there's seven more. They call them bold judgments. I don't know why they call it a bold, <laughs> a bold judgment. You know, I don't know. Uh, but it, it's a lot of this thing in religion. I wish they'd just make it easy. <laughs> but they make it so like to they come up with a story to fit. You know, some of the stuff, and, and it just becomes so hard. They say, really? It's so hard to understand. It's like, also, oh, why doesn't God just get rid of all these bad people and demons and just make it easy for us? You know? well, why are we going to go that through all of this? That would be too easy. Yeah, it would be. Why don't we just do it? Yeah. Go skate right to the park and get it over with, you know? Uh, but, you know, one thing with Revelation, though, is Jesus wins real quick. This ain't, this don't go on for a long time. He wins real quickly. The Antichrist and the false prophet, it goes to the lake of fire. Uh, Satan stays there a thousand years. And then again, he gets released to screw us all up. Then he goes again to the lake of fire. What are you going to release him for? You know, it, it's almost like, as much as I do believe that God is all powerful, it's almost like he has to allow Satan his time too. It's like, you know, if you look at matter, antimatter, right? A magnet, positive, negative, they're equal. You know, good, evil. It's not like God can just dominate and get rid of it. He doesn't destroy anything he creates, right? It stays. Like, he's never destroyed Satan, right? Right. And even in the old myths, they chain these, these entities up, uh, you know, for a thousand years and lock them up. And then, but they're still alive and they, get, they end up getting loose, almost like they're allowed. Mm -hmm. And equal, you know, equality. <laughs> There's your equality for the progressives. Right. It'll, it'll be the uh, fallen angels, right? So uh, there is a resurrection at the end, and, and you, there's a book of life. I think you were talking about that. That you you go through everything that you did, uh, and and then you know, hopefully you're saved, and others uh, will go to the lake of fire, and that's the first time for humans that cooperate with the with the dark side with the Antichrist. Well, here's important, something important. When I try to research this, and when you look at the Bible, every, anything you see, Fred, in red, mm -hmm. if it's in red, it's the actual words. Well, look at the picture, right? So mm -hmm. the, the, you have all this writing, right, in black and white, and then you've got red, red quotes. The red quotes are what Jesus actually said that they can verify he did say this, mm -hmm. right? So, now the thing is, when I went online, MSN, Internet Explorer, or whatever they call it now, uh, was the absolute worst for looking any of this up. I could not word it, what did Jesus originally sa say, everything came up heaven and hell, right? Did Jesus actually say hell? It came up hell. <laughs> you know, Google was better, mm -hmm. I at least got some of it there. But uh, Microsoft, I couldn't get any of it there. You look it up, because I, I, like I said, I came across all the stuff. I look it up. Matthew 10, 17. Here, Fred, see all the red? These are, these are actually what Jesus said. All of the red part is what he actually said, right? As opposed to the black, he didn't say that. That's what he actually said. But uh, I would go to this, and I look up Matthew 10, 13. They said hell, I look, it didn't say that. It said Hades, or, or it yeah. said the fire, or yeah. something like that, right? So, uh, but here's something interesting, too, because I've read other books on exorcism. Demons actually tell the exorcists that they don't want to go back to hell. So even they're saying hell. <laughs> now, whether that's because they're speaking in English, and if they were talking in Greek, it would be Hades, <laughs> you know? But they apparently, it is, exists, because they say it exists. And, you know, I think you, know, you can learn a lot from reading these books on what exorcists say the demons tell us, right? Because you're never supposed to reach out to them and talk, because that's, that's like one of the worst of the worst, is contacting the dead, let's say, uh, is what they say. But, uh, but from the exorcist stories, you can actually learn a lot. So what did Jesus actually say? This is what I'm trying to get to uh, based on what this author said, right? So... 
Did he say hell? No. He said Gahana mm -hmm. or Sheol, right? right? Which is really meant back then you go to a pit, you go to the grave. Then it became uh, Hades, but that's the Greek <laughs> translation. Right. When they tr didn't, that's not the Hebrew words, right? No other biblical figure speaks of death as much as Jesus did. He said it 32 times, you know, he spoke about death. But he gave no, very little description, almost no description other than you go to the darkness. But he did use the darkness imagery a lot. Um, another common picture was you go to the darkness. Uh, Jesus uh, warns that those who refuse to enter the kingdom of God by repenting will be thrown into the outer darkness. And I think that's what it is. And when we talk about the next episode with the psychiatrist that we're going to talk about and mediums, these people are wandering in, in this darkness is, uh, is what's happening, right? And uh, so I'm thinking about this, right? And I'm reading the book right now, Fred, and it talks about, um, you know, Superman, Star Trek, comic book heroes, and how they use religion in a lot of these, you know, and, and it'll be mimicking, like Transformers, there's a lot of right. the resurrection. So I'm thinking, in my mind, that's the way my mind goes, is what if you had a Star Trek <laughs> episode where the Enterprise actually could enter this darkness? Think about that. What a cool episode you could create. Where's our cameraman? Your uh, director, producer. Do an episode on Star Trek, and, they, in, and instead of going through a wormhole, you entered this darkness, and you're in the darkness of the dead, and, and like purgatory. And can the Enterprise pull out of it? Uh, Jesus used real, used real strong language about death. He spoke of only Kahana and the kingdom. He didn't say heaven or hell. But he did use fire as imagery, just like darkness and fire was what he said a lot. You know, he communicated the fire and the horror of, of uh, dying. And he said, like in one quote, you fool, you will be liable to Kahana. Basically fire mm -hmm. is what, what's going to happen to you, right? So in Matthew, in the end, uh, the angels will separate the wicked from the good and cast them into the furnace. So when I looked it up, it said cast them into hell. And I go to the Bible, and it didn't say hell, it said furnace. furnace. So yes. heaven and hell is never used in right. the Bible. It's just a word we made up. But it's a metaphor. When you think about it, he spoke a lot about darkness and fire. How can you have both? If you have fire, it's light. Yeah. <laughs> it's not dark. Yeah. But he used it to emphasize it's not going to be good. Right. And, and, right. and a lot of it is parables. You know, mm -hmm. was it really fire or was it just going to be really terrible? You know, it is really what it is, you know. Um, he spoke, Jesus said the word kingdom 167 times. He never said heaven. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, no one could go to the kingdom until atoned. And in the New Testament, uh, because Jesus died for our sins, you can go to the kingdom. So there's a difference there. So today's beliefs, you have... Uh, this, your soul was actually a spirit in heaven watching everything and you and uh, and you can actually some people think reincarnate uh, the spirit will return uh, the body dies you get a new body but that's like what shapeshifters do right shapeshifter and demons right they can appear as anything they can get a new body at any point is, is what they can do now you mentioned purgatory that was in 1274 was the first time purgatory was said, and that's there to cleanse souls of sins before they can go to heaven, because nothing unpure can go, can go to heaven. Uh, people prayed for the dead, uh, but that's not what Jesus said. He didn't say any of those things about purgatory or praying for the dead. You have to personally atone, right? Uh, the later teachings to me seem to be they wanted to scare people straight. They, yes, they did. They wanted to control more of the masses and understanding um, and, and nothing against the church, but at that time it was very powerful, and they wanted to convert as many from the old world religion as they could. Yeah. So they, they did. They took time to scare people into, you know, if you don't do this, this is, this is going to be horrific for you. This is going to yeah. be bad. So they did. It was, a lot of it, unfortunately, was scare tactics. I wonder if we shouldn't get away from that and get back to, you know, when you die, you're going to wander like a ghost. And it's going to be darkness mostly, and you'll see things, but you can't. You know, and, you're, and you don't know that you're dead. 
That's the whole thing. They're, all these people don't know they're dead. They're looking and saying, what's going on here? I don't, they don't realize that they're dead. So also what comes out of this is that slavery, if you go back, you know, there's a lot of talk about slavery and this and that, but from the first time you had a couple of hundred humans, they were slaves. Yes. 6,000 years ago, slavery. Yeah. It was one of the earliest things developed was cheap labor to get people to do stuff so you can get ahead mm -hmm. and you hold them as a slave, right? Right. And, and communism, both of those came from the devil. They're both strictly from Satan to abuse people is what it is. Then also in reading this stuff, and we'll get to it in a different episode, but you should always bless your food. I never do. I never say a blessing before I eat. Boy, look. Because in a lot of those exorcist books, there's a demon in you and it lodges in your throat. It lodges in, a, in your stomach or, or your left side, let's say, and it got in through food. There was a demon in the food. That's what they say. That's how it got in. I'm just telling you, in the exorcist books of what I've read, you know, how did it enter? Uh, it wasn't by what you um, did. It's almost like you have to invite it in, but it can come in with food also. Well, well, we'll get to that in some other episodes. I'm just saying it here because I read it, right? They also brought up the demons. You know how they choke people, right? Yes. People, right? Yeah. You can't yeah. breathe? Yeah. And, and the, the point was that demons are like animals. What does an animal do? Any animal, lion, tiger, dog, they go, they go for, for the throat. throat. Yes. Because demons behave like animals. Right. I thought that was a good example, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, upon death, the soul will actually see itself. Once it leaves the body, it sees who they really are and all the things they did. Mm -hmm. And I would think it's kind of depressing at that point. It judges itself, and then it's sent off to a cleansing. Right. Now, however that may be, purgatory, lake of fire, whatever it is, but there is a cleansing. Uh, and remember um, Gladiator? The things that you do in life echo for eternity? Mm -hmm. Well, it does in purgatory and hell, right? It, it, what you did is going to echo for quite a long time and affect where you go. Okay, so hypothetically speaking, okay, aliens, okay, mm -hmm. they don't have souls. But but according to the next episode that we get into, this aliens do have souls. Okay. We'll talk, we'll, we'll talk about that Talk about that next episode. Okay. So, yeah. And, and those souls can't attach to you, alien yeah. souls. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that. So, uh, but here's the writings that come from saints, you know, contacting angels, Mother Teresa, Padre Pio, all of, they all say that purgatory is real. Okay, so there is something there that happens to clarify you. Nothing unclean can go to heaven. And they said that actually people that go to purgatory, it's Mary, Mother Mary, that escorts them back to heaven once they're clean. Okay, uh, I want to use this example of possession and exorcism. A door is open, right? You have to open the door somehow. A dark entity enters due to your beliefs or a Ouija board or witchcraft or a curse. And from what I've read, being cursed is the biggest part of these possessions and infestations and the stuff that happened here in this house. I still wonder why. I get stuck on, why did that show up here? Was it a curse? And I'm, I'm kind of, maybe it's a maybe curse. Maybe it was a curse put on your It could, could have been that little blonde they did. <laughs> I, I, think it, I think it was. I think it was. Uh, let's see. Jesus, in the Bible, exercised, did 26 exorcisms, right? Uh, but he said, if you return to your old behavior, it comes back seven times stronger. Right. They will come, and he said it, so I'm going to believe that that's, that's real, right? The pagan gods of old, right, prior to the crucifixion, they were driven off by Jesus and Christianity. And really, it took until, like if you look at like the Vikings, right, they were pagan. So it wasn't until about 1000 AD that Christianity actually drove these pagan gods out. So when we started talking about these pagan gods of Moloch, Baal, Shiva, and others, it took a long time. I mean, it took 5,000 years to drive paganism out of our society. But I think you got paganism coming back right now you in still, a lot of ways. You still have it because a lot of your uh, holy days are actually pagan holidays. Well, they were based on it. Yeah, they were Halloween, based on paganism. A lot, so, of, a lot of the war. And then you take, for example, um, white witchcraft. Wicca. 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 
they believe the same thing Catholics believe, with the exception that they got two gods. Mm -hmm. I mean, so which violates they, the first commandment of yeah, the they, God so before you? Are they you. bad or are they good? I mean, you know, I, well, I, we get to that, and I don't know if it's this episode or I think it's the next one. We do talk about that, so I don't want to delve into that. What comes up on the screen? But basically, Western civilization and Christianity, which started in Europe, came to the United States, drove paganism out. It's it, it really it started in Europe with Christianity, Western beliefs. And, and we're losing that, and people don't understand that. I just saw in England 5% in Germany. I mean, Jesus, Europe was the heart of Christianity. With Rome, 5% of people in, let's say, I don't know, I don't think like Italy, but in uh, you know, France, England, Germany, 5% go to church. Churches are there for tourists yeah. to visit. They don't go to church on Sunday. How's that, how's that possible in, in Europe, of all places, right? But America is following this progressive movement, and the progressive movement is very pagan in their beliefs. You know, thinking you can abort a kid even after born. That's what they did with Moloch, right? When we started this was child sacrifices to these pagan gods, which were fallen angels. So it seems like these pagan gods have returned, and what did Jesus say happens when you go back to your old beliefs? It'll be seven times worse. Yeah. So whatever you think happened back then with the uh, Christians in the Colosseum, it's going to be seven times worse for us, and that's all foretold in uh, Revelation. So here's a, the last slide and a timeline of where we are now and why we've lost a lot of these beliefs, right? So. We used to, prior to the Scopes Monkey Trial, 100 years ago in 1925, right? The what? Scopes Monkey Trial. Whoa. Inherit the Wind, you know, the sort of movie, yeah, Inherit no, the Wind, no. it was a great movie, right? So we believe in creation right? and catastrophic change. So none of this stuff about millions of years, billions of years, right? It was boom, asteroid hit, volcano exploded. Flood, dam broke, whatever. It was immediate stuff formed everything. And now today we don't we don't believe that. But that all changed in the 1925 with the Scopes Monkey Trial, where they took a, a pastor and an atheist. It's true, and they had a trial to prove whether God was real, whether the Bible was real, and the pastor lost, and it was paid for by the ACLU. Who paid for that trial. And he made a lot of mistakes. I read a book once on all the things he should have said, could have said, and he got so to the word, of, you know, and he, he really cornered himself, and he ended up losing it in, in a court in 1925. So then, you know, you go um, 35 years later, 1960 is when they removed Bibles from school. Were there Bibles in school when you were in school, like elementary school? Yeah. I mean, I was born in 57, yeah. so I didn't really... Yeah, there was still when I was in school. I, I think elementary there was. School, like, and that was in the 70s. Yeah, I think what there was, was in the late 60s we, when I was had, in elementary school. We had to say the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, 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 you used to be able to say it. So, 1960, they removed Bibles. 1969 was the start of the LGBT movement in New York City. And that's a whole storyline on how that happened, and there was a lot of symbolism. Even in the bar, the place that the police showed up and raided, uh, it had, I can't remember the whole story, but the name of the bar, and it all goes back to something with, with, with the Shiva, and it's written in documents like 3,000 years ago. You know, it's really interesting. But it started in New York City in 1969. 73, they legalized abortion, right? That's Moloch, right? 1980, removed the Ten Commandments from schools. And you wonder why we have problems. You can't even have a, ten rules to follow in life. They took those out. 87, the Supreme Court actually ruled against creation. They ruled in favor of evolution. Yes. Seven to two. So that's what's being taught all over now. And you go. I went to D.C. three times in the last year. I went to go to every museum. It's so disgusting to go to these museums, and it's so all about millions of years and evolution. Everything's evolution. And then all the other museums are all about slavery and persecution. There ain't a positive thing in there that we can all get along and live together and not judge people by the color of their skin, contact of their character. Do you know, and I don't want to get off on a tangent here, ML, Martin Luther King's 
dream speech about what I just said. Right. You don't find that in the African uh, no, Museum. No. I went through it. I even said, why isn't his speech in here? Why can you end? Because you go through time, really, from the beginning of blacks in America. And I would have thought the last thing you would see would be his speech. Nope, it's not in there. And do you know it's not at the MLK, MLK statue? I went there too, they had 20 of his sayings. It's not there either. And I said, why? And I went to one of the police, and I said, why isn't that here? He said they only allowed it one time. They didn't want to keep repeating it. It's one place, it's at the Lincoln Memorial. Okay, I can see it there, but come on, you don't, it should have been the last thing you see. So that we all get along and we're all the same, no. We want to focus on, on being adversaries, you know, and that's how the Democrats get the votes. It really is. I don't want to go off on that. So now, 2003, Fred, they legalized homosexuality again. That's one of the uh, homosexuality they legalized it, and for let's say Christians, that's um, one of the seven deadly sins. Let's say it's so many times in the Bible that you don't do that, right? So in 2013, 10 years later, they legalized same-sex marriage. So you got political correctness, identity politics, the cancel culture, and it's all geared towards getting you to accept things you never would have, right? The more they show it, the more you see it on TV, and it's in every show, every movie now, it's getting you to not believe what you were brought up to believe, not to believe the Bible, and it's a step-by-step -step dismantling of Christianity. And Christianity is what drove paganism out and made things a lot more fair and equal for people. Even though there's a lot wrong that happened along the years, too. So, any other comments? Because that's our show. So that's the history of heaven and hell and a whole lot of other things that I put into some more. So that's our show, and we will see you next time. Thank you. That's our show, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.